heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I'm Lady Cheryl and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you what I discovered this morning while I was watering my food for us. Yeah, some squirrels got by and they tried to rip off my fruit. Anyway, I'll show you the damage and what I've done and yeah, let's get started. This tree that you're looking right here is my Fuyu persimmon tree. This is my third year having this tree. Uh, it dropped all of its fruit, but one the first year. Last year, I was able to get six persimmons. And this year, I was on track to harvest much more but half of the dr fruit dropped and i'm not concerned because i know that persimmons uh especially when you uh first plant them they have to establish real uh good strong roots because they have a a long tap root that goes all the way down in the soil very deep to pull up nutrients that other trees cannot have access to. That's why you don't even have to fertilize this tree. Uh, what I want to share with you today is while I was watering, I noticed that my tree was being attacked, most likely by squirrels. And I'll come in closer and let you see. Now, I've washed this with water. See right there where they've been eating? You can even see the teeth marks. And I noticed a couple other ones. Here's one right here. I'm having a good time. And I think it's two more and I'll find them. But this is what I wanna share with you. Never get real comfortable because this tree was loaded and I said, okay, I'm not gonna cover it this year with the organza bags like I normally cover. And here's one, a bag that fell down. And I buy these bags from Amazon and I have purchased them from eBay. And all you have to do, and you can see right here that they have been gnawing on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove all of the bad pieces of fruit with my pruners and I'm gonna bag all of my fruit. And I get the bags in a little larger size so that if I have to put a leaf in there as well, I would do that. I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when I put it on. So here is the organza bag. And I didn't lose any fruit last year. I'm trying to focus this. I should go get my tripod. That's what I'll probably do. I didn't lose any fruit when I did this last year. And all I have to do is just pull the string in opposite directions. You don't have to tie it. Well, as you can see here, the fruit is in the bag, a couple leaves is in the bag, and all you have to do is just pull the strings in opposite directions. So all the fruit that's been nibbled on, I'm gonna prune them off, because I don't want that. So I'm gonna take my pruners here. get that and this is going to cut that fruit off and I'll pick it up later and I'm going to carefully look at this piece of fruit it's fine so I will bag it and I'll come back and I'll show you what I pruned off here's another one right here I'm going to prune off and I'm going to look at the fruit next to it and it hasn't been touched and I'll bag up all this fruit and I will be back okay guys so this is what the tree looks like and as I get closer to the tree, I'm going to share with you that I got larger bags this year, um, anticipating more fruit, and I'm glad that I did. I believe this is a seven by eight bag, and you can put 
two pieces of fruit in one bag. And let me clear something up. You don't have to put the leaves in the bag. It's just the way that the persimmons grow. Sometimes you can't help but put the leaf in the bag. But a lot of these bags have two. Let me show you right here. There's two persimmons in this bag and then one right on top of it. And sometimes the leaves are right uh, there with the persimmon, so it's hard to not get it in the bag. And as I said previously, you don't have to tie them. You just pull the strings in opposite directions. Okay, here's another one. They're so close. Let me see, get my hand out the way. The, the persimmons are so close to each other, I couldn't put them in two bags. I put them in one. Okay, now I'll let you see here on the ground that this tree has dropped a lot of fruit. You see, each one of these was a persimmon. All down here. And then here are the four pieces that the squirrels got. But I'm not going to leave them there. I'm going to pick them up and put them in the compost. I'll come back. Here you can see uh, pomegranate that has dropped from this tree. So you never know what you're gonna get. We have a lot of high winds in Texas. So a lot of times they'll drop because of the winds. Here are two right here together. Okay, so now I want you to think about something. If the squirrels come back tonight and they aren't able to get any of these persimmons and they're probably going to bring some of their friends back and say hey come over here that lady got a lot of persimmons on her tree they're going to be ticked that they can't get my persimmons so what do you think they're going to do that's right they are going to start looking at my apple trees so as you can see right here six apples so I'm gonna put three in each bag, or I'm gonna put four in this one, or maybe two and two. I'm gonna bag the apples up on this tree. It's quite a lot of them. And the pears over there, let's go in closer so you can see. See those pears? They aren't as big as they appear on this screen. I'll get up close and let you see, but they are a nice size. And then there are apples on other trees. This little apple tree, I thought it didn't have any apples on it. Come to find out. As my mama used to say, move back. There's an apple right there. So I know this tree has apples, so I'm going to bag up everything. That will be my job for today. I'm going to be bagging up my fruit because they are coming after it. And you all know how I feel about my fruit. <laughs> okay, so I'll come back and show you what Guys. I've done. Hmm. We move my mask out the way. I want to show you guys we have high winds in Texas, and this branch just snapped. So I lost three apples here. And it happens. You know? That's why you can't count your apples or your chickens before they hatch. <laughs> okay, just want to share that with you. Okay. So I got these covered up. These apples. In this tree, I just need to go in the house and get one more bag. Actually, I'm going to go get a lot of more bags because I'm going to start on some other trees. But I do need to get a bag to cover this apple up right here. And um, let's make sure what apple this is. Oh. Dog on it? I don't know. I got to look at my notes. I think it's a, a crimson apple from Stark Brothers. Then I'll start over here on these pears and just work my way around the food forest. So here is the next tree that I'm going to work with. It is a kefir pear and it's in the ground as you can see there. And it has several pieces of fruit on it. And I'm very proud of this tree because it's about eight feet tall. And I cut this tree down to about five feet because it had blight. This is the third year with this tree I bought this one from tractor supply and I'm removing all of the small pieces of fruit that aren't going to make it as you can see right there and let's just put it here right now it'll go in the compost and um, yeah I cut this tree down to about right here 
I've mentioned it several times in other videos, but this is one of the trees that I was able to um, treat and for blight and keep it. The main thing was I wasted time with using fungicides on them, even though they're organic. From here on out, if I ever get a tree to get blight, I'm just going to cut it down and keep cutting it down until, um, you know, I can cut the blight out. But anyway, fire blight. So I'm going to bag these fruits, these four pieces. I think it's five. Yeah, there's another six, one here and one here. I'm going to bag all of these. I'm going to remove this one because it's not going to make. So let's not waste energy. And um, yeah, I'll bag these and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so I have all of the fruit bagged. And uh, this is one of the trees that I'm gonna let grow very tall. And the fruit in the years to come will be more. And I won't even worry about bagging the top of the tree when it gets like 10 feet or so. I'll let the squirrels have that and, and I'll take what, what's um, you know in the middle and the bottom of the tree. Okay, so I'm gonna move on over here to another tree, apple tree that's in the ground and push these, these back and I noticed that this only has one apple. I didn't know it had any. I missed it until this morning. I'll bag it and then I'll move on. This golden delicious apple in the container doesn't have any fruit on it but I imagine next year it will. And right next to it is a, and that's from Stark Brothers, and right next to it is a Stark Brothers tree. It's a Kinder Crisp, one of their signature trees. And it only has a few pieces of fruit. Let's see, two here and one here. And this is the second year. So next year we'll get more. Let me walk around and see if it's any on this side. Yeah, I thought it was more. We have quite a few pieces over here. There's one right there two here and three over here and some more on this side. So I'll bag up all this fruit and then I'll come back. So this Kinder Crisp, which is a signature apple of Stark Brothers is all bagged up. And as you can see here, we have two apples in the bag and in some spots, you know, I had to do what I had to do because they were so close together. And um, like right here, you can see two apples there. And let's hope that this tree does very well after it has been protected. Anyway, this um, tree, I've just had it two years. And uh, I'm just really surprised. And if you guys remember, this is the one you could tell the leaves are a little slightly damaged. This is the one that had the aphids on it but um, it has recovered very well this tree will definitely go in the ground next year as well as this apple tree next to it and you see I'm glad I came around here because I forgot this one I'll go back to back that one up before nightfall and this is the golden, golden delicious apple. It's going in the ground in the fall. And I'm telling you guys, it's really a good idea sometimes to put your tree in containers so that you'll know. That's an uh, airplane flying over. Let me step into the shade. So that you will know how well they're going to do. And that way, uh, you can kind of keep an eye on the water level and how much moisture is actually uh, getting. Especially your peach and your cherry trees. They don't like wet feet. I can't say it enough. Um, so let's take a little overview. Let me go in closer and let you see that tree right there. Which has a lot of uh, bags on it. And right there looking at the um, blue persimmon and then the kefir pear right here and um, the apple trees right up in here 
Okay, something I mean I need to do. I need to bag up a piece of fruit right here. Okay, I gotta remember that. Okay. Alright. So that's it for today as far as the trees that I'm gonna put fruit on, uh, bags on the fruit. I will do some more tomorrow. This concludes this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. God loves you and I love you too. If you would like to make a cash donation to my channel, all donations can be sent to my cash app or my PayPal me account. Any donation will certainly be appreciated.